Hey you! Yeah, you, the ugly one. Have you ever wanted to experience the horrors of war? Would you like to cower from the deathly scream of a JU-87 Stuka diving at Mach 2 towards your house? Do you want to take a nice peaceful drive through the countryside in your German Tiger? Then boy do I have the game for you. War Thunder is a realistic military vehicle combat simulator with three main types of vehicles each with their own player base, playstyle, and form of severe brain damage. The vehicles and maps are mostly from the World War II era, but nowadays, the big snail is adding more and more modern machines. Since this game is being updated constantly, some of the shit I might say may be fixed or outdated, but I mean it's Gaijin, so they're probably not gonna fix much. Anyway, let's go! Now, planes were the first vehicles in the game, and they're arguably the most fun. So it makes sense to talk about them first. And holy shit are there a lot of them. All the way from your little P-26, all the way up to the fucking A-10 Thunderbolt. Air battles are definitely the most engaging in War Thunder. Compared to the slow moving tanks and boats, these guys go a little bit faster. Air battles are cool because Gaijin actually put some effort into making the battles not too arcadey. Like how making your pilot withstand several G's of force constantly probably isn't good for his health. And how diving towards the earth at 700 kilometers an hour might have a little bit of air resistance. But in reality, people aren't gonna play War Thunder for the realistic aerodynamics. They're gonna play it for the big shooty gun planes. So I'm gonna give you my favorites from the American tree cause I'm not playing this game 18 hours a day to grind every country. So first, we have the lowest rated, but my personal favorite, the Big Mommy PBY-5 Catalina. This plane isn't great. It's slow, its defensive gunners all have mild retardation, and couldn't hit a blue whale if it was staring down the gun barrel. But what this morbidly massive motherfucker does have is, hmm, a metric fuck ton of explosives. Like, you're never gonna really get to use them. But if you manage to get to a target before the game ends, I mean, it's 4,000 pounds of bombs, you can probably guess what happens. Next, my main plane right now is the P-39N. This guy is a fast fighter that can also have either bombs or rockets, and is also fitted with six Browning machine guns, which is perfect because there's nothing more American than shooting a man in this Walmart of a world. This is my favorite fighter because one, with its masses of guns shooting at almost 2,000 bullets a minute, this guy just demolishes everything. And with its high speed and pretty decent turning, you're gonna win a lot of fights. And once you start getting into the higher tiers of planes, the game becomes more... How do I put this? Uh... Uh... Fucked in the head. And finally, my third favorite plane. Now, this plane is an American, but its low cost make it really easy to unlock. The A5M4 isn't a particularly good plane, it's just an average low tier plane with guns. The reason I like it is because I can recreate a certain event from the Second World War. Well that was planes, I guess now we do. Now observe as the Hesh round detonates on the Leclerc and liberates our computer from harm. Tanks in War Thunder are the exact opposite of planes. Planes are mostly fast and agile and rapid firing. If you're in a plane, you'll always have something to do. In a tank, you move and do things at the pace of a paraplegic with slightly below athletic ability. Playing tanks in this game is almost fun. You'll be driving around capping points or shooting at the bad guys when your fun is put to a halt when a kilogram of explosives detonate inside your tank so a crew member is knocked out and your engine gets set on fire, so you have to sit there for 30 seconds repairing it, and then after it's finished, you immediately get fucking blasted and- <laughs> Anyway, when you finally get a game where Gaijin isn't pointing the finger at you while teabagging your dead corpse, it's actually pretty entertaining. Instead of speed and agility, now you're working with strategy and positioning. Some tanks have speed, while others, like the, uh... Timothy 
specialize in delivering you that Domino's hot and ready, high explosive anti-tank ammunition right through your ammo rack. And some moments in this game will make you feel like a badass, single-handedly killing half the enemy team and narrowly surviving a point-blank encounter with a... uh... that. You remember why you played this game. My favorite tanks are the Tiger, cause... Big, and Timothy, cause he's a low-rated tank, but he's the definition of fuck around and find out. <laughs> Anyhow, if you're looking for a tank game to play, there's this and World of Tanks, so there isn't really much of a choice. I'll be honest with you, I, I'm kind of retarded. Now, originally this part of the video was just me shit-talking how boring the boats are in this game, but they've kind of grown on me. I mean, they're mildly entertaining if I'm waiting for the crew in some other game mode. They're definitely the worst game mode, but I mean, if you like them, you're a little bit slow, but you know, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Researchers have found that brain damage is associated with a particular protein called War Thunder. Okay, the players. All you need to know about them is that 99% of them are either brain dead or batshit insane. Or a combination of the two. I would know. Picture this, you're loaded into a nice game of ground arcade, right? Just want to chill a little bit, you know? 30 seconds into the round. thing is, there's no D point to be found, and then it all descends into madness. No. Like these guys. Attention to the map. Never. First of all, congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Hello, I like money. Okay, before I talk shit, I'm just gonna fire off some things that this game does great. Graphics and vehicle models are pretty nice, although the Catalina still doesn't have a cockpit model after like nine years. Two, the music while being a bit loud, is a fucking jam. 3. The cool little details like shells ricocheting really add to the realism. And 4. My favorite thing about this game, the customization. Gaijin really did not skimp on the customization in this game. You can do simple stuff like change your camo or add a little decal to your tank, or you can go full artiste and paint over the game files to fully customize your plane to make it sexy. You can even edit the loading screen when launching the game. Jesse, we have to cook. Okay, now it's everyone's favorite time. Shitting on Gaijin, yay. Gaijin is like that immortal snail. But instead of wanting your blood, it wants something much, much worse. Your credit card details. These guys have mastered the art of legal scamming. Okay, so the progression in this game comes through research points or RP. And at the low levels, it only takes a few games to unlock a new vehicle. But as you climb the ranks, the research needed starts to climb as well. Say you earn about 1000 RP on average per game. At early levels, a new tank is about 4000 to 9000 RP. So that'll take you about 9 games. But as you get higher in battle rating, the RP climbs to astronomically high levels. Now, you could play for 2000 hours to get that new tank. Or, you could break out mommy's credit card and buy it. Money makes all the pain go away. You can buy premium accounts to earn research faster, you can buy golden eagles to instantly get the vehicles you want, and you can buy premium vehicles that are sometimes just straight up better than their free to play counterpart. These guys want to make that grind as agonizing as possible, so you fork over the big bucks for that M1 Abrams. Oh, and you thought since that shiny new vehicle was yours, you would finally get to have some fun with it? Or say hello to my little friend called BR, which is an acronym for FUCK YOU. Battle rating is in place to stop you in your little milk truck going up against a panther. But the thing is, it doesn't even work. Half the time, you'll get a new vehicle and you'll be excited to try it out. But then you get paired up with tanks a whole tier higher than you because Gaijin says it cuts down on loading times. Like. I appreciate the thought, but it's not much use waiting less time to get into a game if once I get into said game, I immediately get fucking smoked. Anyway, there are probably more things I could say, but every second I waste here is a second better grinding RP. In summary, War Thunder is a mostly fun game. It's many vehicles and solid gameplay, 
coupled by the fact that it doesn't really have any competition, make it probably the best game like it out there. If the game even looked a little bit interesting to you, I reckon you should try it out. As long as you recognize Gaijin's efforts to take your money and ignore them, you're gonna be fine. The lower tiers is where all the fun happens anyway. War Thunder. It's almost fun.